So hi guys, this is the last iteration of our unit converter and what we did, we converted or we put all conversion factors in a list and accessed each conversion factor by inserting the list variable and the respective index. And if I run that application, just save it, run, and I put in the lambda value and that's, that's the way it goes. Now, we can take that a step further and why not put those conversion types also in a list? And that list would look something like that. Uh, oh, there we go. And then all I have to do is basically uh, go here and say conversion types, open square bracket, zero, close square bracket, and let's make that into a string just to be safe and save that and let's run it again let's put in our 25 and you see i have the first one here and i've got a slight problem which is basically the colon and the space is missing but that should be a problem because what i do i go over here just do a plus and then add that colon as a string literal and if I save that run it and now I have the same effect as the others and basically what we can do now is we just take that and copy it and replace those strings with that list and then just change the respective index save it and run it and we're getting the same effect as previously right so so far so good now we've converted everything to lists which is pretty good however we're not using the single biggest advantage of lists and let's check out what that advantage is so let's let's remove all that code now and let's create a simple list which is called ABC and that now a list can contain anything it can contain numbers it can contain a string it can contain a float and another string right and we know in order to access uh, a list element all you have to do is just get its index and you see I'm getting the second element and we all know now by now that all lists start with 0 1 2 3 so 2 would be the 0 0.56 right and um, you can obviously add to a list whatever elements you need uh, call it and if I access then that element that would be element 0 1 2 3 4 so it would be element 4 save it and we got that right now one interesting uh, function regarding lists is basically length and length is basically the function L and that gives you how long that list is so um, if I say if I print len ABC uh, that should give me one two three four five the length should be five let's try it out and voila it is five and if I add uh, or let's take off a couple of elements that should render the list to three all right and if I put them back again and add another element uh, save it and that should render the list to six right now that's good and the thing is uh, the, what we did with our unit converter is we wanted to print each element of the list 
So what we did until now, print, uh, sorry, print um, ABC and close, close. And then what we did is just copy that as many. Now we have here six elements, so I need to copy that uh, five times, five further times. Four, five, six, and then just ch change the indices from one to two to three to four and to five. So that's basically what we did in our unit converter. And here we have all those elements, right? Now, what is a better way of doing that? A better way of doing that is using uh, an iteration and one good iterator or an iterator basically and one good iterator would be the for loop and how is the for loop function well uh, let's let's uh, let me comment this stuff out uh, yep and let me remove that and let's put a for loop here so for one way of doing a for loop is for uh, now any variable just take any variable for I don't know uh, B in ABC colon print B. So now what happens here? Let me just explain the code. B is any variable, and ABC is our list. So for B in ABC, print B. So what happens is now the first time you run this loop, B goes here and prints a 23. Then by the next next iteration in the for loop, it takes the next element, apple, so it prints apple, then goes to the 0 0.56 and prints that, and so on, until the end of the loop. And then, and then that for loop is done, and it exits, and then the next code is then uh, executed. So let's try it out. And you see here, I've printed all the elements, just like I did with here, but I don't, I don't have to copy all those print statements. I just have one print statement. And this is a professional or a good way of doing that now this type of for loop is not a professional way of doing it because often um, you rely more on the index of that for loop than the element and what I mean by that often is you need the index of the element and uh, I'll show you and, and the, the, the element itself is not you, you never go I mean in most professional applications that I've done I never done a for loop like this um, to explain let me just show you another for loop you can also loop through a range of numbers so for instance for a or c let's say c c in range uh, 13 print c so what that does it goes through a range from 0 to 30 and prints those numbers save and here we go okay that's that's our that's our range and you can also specify the range differently you can say like from 2 to 13 so now you've narrowed down your range not from 0 to 13 but from 2 to 13 and let me just comment this stuff out hold on a second So now you see we're just printing from two to yeah sorry it doesn't go to thirteen but it always goes to the to the number just before the thirteen so always till twelve right okay great so how does that make our for loop better well the professional for loop does not rely on the element itself but on the index so basically what I mean is like this for i or whatever in range. Now I need a range of numbers for us to iterate through that list. Now, one way of doing it is just saying one, two, three, four, five, six, and just writing six in here. That would be pretty valid. However, what if my list gets longer or shorter than that would prove to be a, a problem or a liability. So what you don't what you say is length and then ABC. So now we are iterating through a range of numbers from zero to whatever the length of ABC is. And what do we print out? We print out 
the um, the the article itself. So basically, the, the item itself. So A B C, and then bracket I, and close. So you see, we're basically following this procedure here, except now we're not inserting the individual indices, but the for loop is doing it because we just inserted a general variable. Save that, uh, remove that, or comment it out. Right, save, and then let's run it. So you see, I'm getting the same iteration. And working with indices is much simpler than with this one, because often you have to, you will see them in further, uh, you know, writing complex applications or, or more advanced applications, you often rely on that index and you often need that, that index gets uh, calculated or, or uh, is obtained from another uh, section in your application and then you need to, to iterate through the loop with that index. So doing a for loop like this is far more flexible than doing it like this. And you will see now in our example, let's, let's, let's get our example back. We have this one here. Now, if we want to convert that into a for loop, I don't want to repeat all these print statements again. So here I go for uh, C in uh, conversion factors. Uh, sorry, in range len conversion factors len conversion factors close close colon now let me just copy one of those print statements put it in here and all I have to do is now, instead of this zero, I just put in C and here C. And now you see here the advantage of uh, using an index because both conversion types and conversion factors are exactly the same length. They have to be because, you know, uh, each one is relevant to the, to the, each conversion type is relevant to the conversion factor, you know, respectively. So I can, with that index, I can use two lists obviously they have to be of the same length but i have to i have me as a program i have to check that they're both the same length but however i'm using the same index see whereas if i did a for loop like this I see. Now I can print A, which is uh, the convert, or I can even print that. But I can't print anything from conversion types because A is the element of conversion factors. So I'm always, uh, sorry, and that would be here A. So, but the, but the disadvantage of this for loop is I'm just looping through conversion factors, but I need elements from conversion types as well. So that's why the more professional way, basically getting an index and then using that index in your, in your loop is far more flexible and far more effective than this simpler uh, for loop. That's my experience anyways. So let's remove all that. And now you see, I've just reduced my application to two lines. To, uh, let me just go back. Let me just remove that. Let's uncomment that. So now, instead of having these four lines, or whatever number of lines I have, depending on my conversion factors, I've reduced everything to this. And now you can add hundreds of conversion factors and hundreds of conversion types. I don't care because that doesn't change and that depends on the length of them. So let's save that, run it, and 
kilometer value. Let's put it in at 25. And you see, I'm getting all the same effects. So you see, with loops, with a for loop, with lists and a for loop, we can render up our, our code much more compact and we don't have to repeat those silly repetitions of those print statements where we have to manually change each type. We let the computer do that with the for loop.